In this video, we will review different types of radiation detection devices as well as their function and purpose. We will also look at types of personal dosimetry devices and best practices in their use. We will start with gas-filled detectors. There are four main types, and all four use the same basic principle to detect and measure radiation. First, we will review the process, and then we will discuss the different types of gas-filled detectors and their uses. The basic premises of gas-filled detectors starts with ionizing radiation passing through a container, often a cylinder filled with air or gas. The radiation interacts with a gas atom by ionizing it. As you may recall, ionization is the process of removing tightly bound electrons from an atom. So the more ionizing radiation, the more ionizations will occur. The atom is now a positively charged ion since it has lost an electron. Negatively charged electrons that are released from these ionizations are attracted to the positively charged anode, which is an electrode that is located at the center of the cylinder. The anode is sometimes referred to as an anode pin or plate. The electrons form an electrical signal that is detected, amplified, and measured. This electronic signal is displayed on the meter. There are a couple of general principles that you should know about gas-filled detectors. The larger the cylinder, the more atoms are available for ionization, making the device more sensitive. The same is true for devices that have pressurized chambers, where the atoms are more condensed. You should also know that the electrical charge generated from the ionizations is proportional to the amount of ionizing radiation. So now that we are aware of how gas-filled detectors work, let's look at some examples. The first is an ionization chamber. These devices are highly accurate. The chamber of gas is inside the device, and as the radiation interacts with the gas atoms, the number of freed electrons are proportional to the radiation causing the ionizations. Ionization chamber devices are often used to test the output of X-ray tubes, as well as detect radiation in fluoroscopic systems and nuclear medicine generators. The Geiger-Muller tube, also known as the Geiger counter, uses a gas that is more easily ionized than air, such as argon. When the argon atom is ionized, the ejected electron in turn knocks other electrons out of their shells through repulsion. This process causes a chain reaction that spreads across the gas chamber. After the gas atoms within the chamber have been completely ionized, they are restored to their original state by ethyl alcohol. Because the Geiger-Muller tube is detecting the presence of radiation, but not the quantity of radiation, the device is considered very sensitive, but not very accurate. These devices are unable to measure the accumulation of radiation because the counter resets itself. It cannot count during these periods that it is resetting. A Geiger counter can detect alpha, beta, gamma, and X-ray radiation, but it cannot differentiate between them. Proportional counters are another type of gas-filled detector. This device uses a similar process as the Geiger-Muller tube, in that once the electron is ejected, it propels other electrons out of their shells through a chain reaction as well. It's called the cascade effect. The proportional counter can distinguish between alpha and beta radiation and is used to assess small amounts of radiation. The last gas-filled detector we will discuss is the pocket dosimeter, which, as you might have guessed, is worn on the pocket to detect and measure the radiation dose he or she is being exposed to in their duties as a technologist. Pocket dosimeters are good for short-term monitoring because they are immediately readable, but they can be inaccurate if not properly used or if they are knocked around. We will discuss other more commonly utilized types of personal monitoring devices later in this video. Next, we will look at scintillation detectors. But before we can, we should review what scintillation is. Scintillation is the immediate emission of light when struck by radiation. We sometimes refer to this as fluorescence. Scintillation takes place in a special crystal. Let's look at how this scintillation crystal is used in a detector. When the radiation interacts with the crystal, an electron in the crystal's atom is moved or jumped to a higher electron shell but it doesn't stay there, the electron immediately falls back into place, giving off energy as visible light. That burst of light is converted into electrons when it strikes the photocathode of the photomultiplier tube, or PM. This is accomplished through photoelectric effect. The electrical current is amplified by the dynodes of the photomultiplier. Each time a dynode is struck by an electron, several more electrons are produced, resulting in a greater current. This amplified current is directed at the collecting electrode, 
also called a collector. Scintillation detectors are sensitive to X-rays and gamma radiation, more so than a Geiger counter. This technology is used to create CT and nuclear medicine images, but for the purposes of this discussion, we are more concerned with it being used in portable radiation survey instruments. A scintillation detector can register a single photon interaction, which is why it is so sensitive. We will now look at other types of personal dosimetry devices, starting with the thermoluminescent dosimeter, or TLD. The TLD is similar to the scintillation detectors we just talked about because they also utilize crystalline materials. In the same way as scintillator detectors, the crystal fluoresces when the ionizing radiation jumps the electron to a higher electron shell. However, with the TLD, the electron remains in the orbital trap. So the more radiation that is received by the TLD, the more electrons are collected in the orbital traps and they stay there. That is until the dosimeter is processed. Heat is applied to the crystalline material and those trapped electrons return to their original orbital shell. As they return, they release their energy as light, which is again measured by a photomultiplier tube. Personal thermoluminescent dosimeters are widely used in the medical imaging field to track the dose received by technologists. The type of energy can be extracted from these devices by means of various filtration. Different radiation filtration materials such as copper, aluminum, and tin are placed over the crystalline material and through measuring the half value layer, the energy level of the radiation can be determined, which helps to identify the type of radiation. Just to refresh your memory, the half value layer is the amount of filtration that it takes to absorb half of the radiation's original intensity. There are many advantages of TLDs, such as being small and lightweight. However, you should know that TLDs are sensitive to extreme heat and or chemicals that can skew the data extracted from these devices. They also can only detect radiation from the front of the device, so the orientation and position of the dosimeter is important. Another type of personal monitoring device is the Optically Stimulated Luminescence Dosimeter, or OSL. This personal dosimetry device is similar to the TLD in that it also utilizes luminescence to measure the radiation exposure. The difference is that when an OSL is struck by radiation, the electron is placed in an excited state. It stays in this state until a laser light stimulates the excited electron, releasing the energy as a visible light emission while the electron returns to its normal state. The light emitted is proportional to the radiation dose received by the device. OSLs are more sensitive to radiation than TLDs. The OSL has a precision of 10 microgray. It can also be reanalyzed to confirm a dose report. These are two advantages over the TLDs. Film badges aren't used as often with better and more reliable dosimeters on the market, but they are economical and so some facilities may opt for the old-fashioned film badge. The way these work is that a piece of film, much like what was used to capture X-ray images pre-digital era, is enclosed in a light, tight, waterproof foil and plastic container. The film is processed and the amount of metallic silver that is produced indicates the amount of radiation exposure. As with TLDs, filtration is added to determine the radiation type. This again means the orientation and position of the dosimeter may affect the data extracted. Film badges are not very accurate and have a number of disadvantages, including their sensitivity to heat and chemicals that can register a higher dose reading. Accuracy and reliability can be compromised and hence the decline of this dosimeter's usage. Personal dosimetry devices are most limited by improper use, so it is important to be mindful of placement, storage, and care of your dosimeter. Dosimeters must be worn as designed, so become familiar with the manufacturer's recommendations for usage. Most dosimeters are worn for a period of one to three months. Whole body dosimeters must be worn at neck or chest level. Your dosimeter should be worn on the outside of your lead apparel unless specified. For example, fetal dosimeters are meant to be worn on the inside of the lead apron at waist level. Be sure to keep your dosimeter away from heat and this means you need to be mindful about where you store it. Whenever possible, you should store it at the facility that you are working. However, this may not be feasible for those traveling between facilities. Do not store it in your car where extreme temperatures can interfere with the reading. Do not take your device on airplanes or wear during your own medical imaging procedures. Make sure to keep track of your device. A device that is not worn or not submitted does you no good. In some states, the technologist can be held accountable 
from not properly wearing and submitting their personal dosimeter for processing. Make sure that you are the only one wearing your dosimeter, and make sure to wear it while you are working so that your radiation dose, which is tracked throughout your career as a radiation worker, is accurate. Radiation detection devices aren't always part of the technologist's everyday duties, but these valuable tools help us maintain safe working areas, test and calibrate our radiation-producing equipment for accuracy, test and measure radiation-producing substances, and lastly monitor the radiation exposure we receive while working in the field of medical imaging and radiation therapy. Without these tools, facilities, manufacturers, service engineers, and technologists would not be able to be held accountable or given guidance on creating a safe working environment for ourselves and the patients we serve. In the next video, we will examine dose limitations for various populations.